Hello and welcome back to another scrapbooking process video. I'm Tracy, also known as Mercy Tiara, and I create scrapbooking process videos and more here on my channel. Today I am going to be scrapbooking these two photos of my husband's birthday. It just took place a couple of days ago, and I'm going to be using my MercyTiaraKits.com kit planning tool, which you can pick up for free on our website, MercyTiaraKits.com, and just sign up for our newsletter and you will get this four page worksheet for free. It includes, among other things, these six spaces for you to create sketches. And I've sketched out some ideas here. I was inspired by a, an Instagram post and I looked for it and I can't find it, but it was an Instagram post from a journaler who had uh, created a bursting effect where it looked like the paper had been punched or or an explosion had gone off and the paper was all torn and you could see underneath of it some illustrations and that sort of thing. So I'm using that as my inspiration here and I am going to be using the joy kit and add-ons for this page. Also available at mercytrkits.com. That's our shop where we sell our monthly kits. And I'm just trying to decide on a background. This is going to be a double page. So I am looking for something that I have two of. I have used this kit for two layouts before this. So I just have to make sure I'm choosing something I've got two of for my background. I've decided to go with this star background because it's a little bit more interesting than just a plain cardstock, but not quite as busy as that plaid was that I was originally planning for. I went to my stash and grabbed two pieces of white cardstock. We did not have a cardstock add-on this month um, in, in our shop. So I'm just going to my stash to get these two pieces of white. They're basil. I like white basil. It's a nice neutral white. It's not too blue. It's not too orange or yellowy. It's, it's a nice mid range white. It's textured on one side and smooth on the other. I'm trimming off the manufacturer's strips from those two pieces of paper. They're from Cartabella. It came in the kit and I am going to be having both of these have a white card, uh, like the white cardstock background so that when the burst happens or, or the, the cut part of the paper, um, you're going to see the photo behind on white cardstock. Now, when I was live streaming with my patrons as I did this, and one of my viewers did point out that one of my background papers was turned 90 degrees. So I just fixed that. And whenever you're using a patterned paper as a background on a two page spread. You just want to make sure you're paying attention to those sorts of little details that you might notice later and have some regrets about how you put together your page. I am tearing this and you know what? I think I tore it a little bit too perfect. Like obviously it's not perfect, but I think I would have liked it better if it wasn't quite so circular. And you'll see what I mean with the final process, like the final product. It does look okay, but I think this would have been a good opportunity to make my circle be much more jaggedy right from the beginning, then I wouldn't have had to have figured out how to add in some jagginess to it a little bit later. So I'm starting by just rolling the paper to make it look torn back. And that's not looking quite messy enough. It just looks you know, obviously it looks distressed, but it's way too uniform. It doesn't look random enough. It doesn't look like something actually punched a hole in the paper from the other side or, you know, like the Kool-Aid man just kind of like burst through the page. That's sort of the look I'm going for, except not with a Kool-Aid man cutout shape, <laughs> if, you, if you know what I mean. So I decided to tear off a couple of little pieces to have them extend as if it didn't break evenly. And that's helping it look a little bit more random. But I think the thing that ended up helping it look the most random, if I were to do this again, was pulling back my paper at different angles so that it didn't look so uniform. So here's where I'm, I'm going to pull it at different angles and that helps it look a little bit less circular. You'll see, I'll, I'll do it again right here where I'm, tur I'm turning back that one at one angle and then the one beside it, I'm turning at a different angle and I'm leaving some of them unrolled and rolling some of them up. And I'm trying to make little triangular jags that extend into the page just to make it look a little bit more naturally torn. 
I was feeling like maybe what I should have done is just cut my cross in the center with my exacto knife and then just punched my hand right through it. That might have gotten me a bit more of a natural look. But I am liking how that looks in general. And I'm going to have the photo on the white pattern paper background. I thought about putting it on a doily, but what I think I'd rather do is some mixed media behind behind it. And that was also on my kit planning tool, one of the one of the spaces that you have to fill out on some of the earlier pages. It includes questions about what kinds of techniques you'd like to use and what products from your stash you'd like to use. And so one of the things I identified on my kit planning tool was that I'd like to do some light stenciling uh, in the that extends beyond behind a photo or a cluster and so that's what I'm going to be doing on this page today. I do have those two photos one will go on one side of the layout and one will go on the other side here's the sizes of them two by 3.5 and six by two by 3.25 and uh, that 6 by 3.25 is the size that automatically prints up on my printer when I say fit to size when I have printed a, a photo that was a full iPhone screen so I think the I think the orientation is 9 by 16 or something or the aspect ratio or something and that's how big it ends up coming out now I do want to do that stenciling that I talked about so I'm just roughly indicating with a pencil. I stuck my pencil underneath so I definitely wouldn't be penciling in any of the places that will show and then I'm just trying to decide which of my three stencils I'm going to use. These stencils came in the mixed media add-on for the joy kit and I've been really loving working with them. So I'm going to put a little bit of stenciling in this right hand page and also some on the left hand page as well where the where the vertical photo will go. So what I did was I just notched off the corners and then I drew a rectangle that's actually smaller than where the photo will go because I definitely don't want my pencil marks to show. And once you've done your mixed media, you can't erase your pencil as easily, sometimes at all. So I just wanted to make sure that my rectangle that shows me where the photo goes is definitely smaller than the photo, so it definitely won't show. Now I'm using a Vicki Booten stenciling brush for this, and I have some tips about how to do this. This brush came in the mixed media kit along with this beautiful Bow Bunny stenciling paste. I'm drinking tea and we're having a conversation about tea versus coffee. I don't enjoy tea, although I do sometimes like certain teas. <laughs> so <laughs> we were having a conversation about that. Now, with stenciling paste, you can apply it with a brush, but you have to be careful because when stenciling paste is going to dry very stiff on your brush, and that's okay. There's a few things that you can do. One is you can use it very, very, very lightly, and then make sure that it doesn't dry on your brush, like rinse your brush right away, and then you won't have too much trouble at all. So see how I am applying a very, very light coat of this stenciling paste. If I applied a nice thick coat, I would get lots and lots of texture, but I'm not looking for texture here. I'm just looking for some very light stenciling and stencil paste does a really good job of this because uh, it, it's so light when you use it. It's very, very subtle when you use it uh, in this way, as opposed to using it as a paste. And sometimes paints can be just a little bit too vibrant and it can be hard to thin them out. So without adding water, and then if you're using water on a piece of plain cardstock, that can be tricky because your cardstock will start to pill up and, and could get kind of wet and messy. So in this case, I am making sure that I get this this paste off of my stencil the best that I can. It's a very, very thin application that I'm using here. Now, when you're cleaning this brush with a baby wipe, be very careful, don't move the brush around on the baby wipe. What I was basically doing there was leaving it in one place and just kind of like 
moving it around, like wiggling it. But it's even better to use a cloth as opposed to a baby wipe. Because if I had rubbed it around on the baby wipe, I would have gotten a lot of pilling. A lot of little fibers from the baby wipe would have made their way into my brush. And that would have made it difficult for me to use the brush again without a good thorough cleaning. So using just plain water there is what I used and a just a, a rag and just working it into the brush so that that paste doesn't dry in the brush. I'll talk a little bit more about how to clean that brush if you do get paste in it because I did get quite a bit of paste in it on the second application. So what I'm doing there is I'm just rubbing off some of the little bits. When you use paste as a paint it does you get a little bit of, of fibers or not really fibers, but little bits of it that accumulate on the page. They're not, they're not attached to the page. You just basically wipe them off. It's, it's no big deal. And they don't even stain. Like they don't make a, they don't make a mark as you wipe them off. So it's pretty easy. If you, if you get a bit of residue, just push it off your page and it's no big deal. You saw me cut down my page there and that actually limits my options in a little bit. When I go to the second page, I'll tell you what an option that I don't have because I just trimmed down my white page. I trimmed down that white background because I really did not want it to show behind the white. And I didn't want to have to worry about how I was lining up both the photo now that the photo is, is attached to the background and also all four of the edges of my white paper so that they wouldn't extend anywheres. Uh, so trimming it down just made positioning that photo in the center of my burst uh, paper tearing a little bit easier. And if that didn't make sense, I hope it will once I once I kind of do this. So I'm putting my title for this layout. It's B-Day Boy or Birthday Boy, which is what we call Scott on his birthday. He's the birthday boy. And I'm just cutting off from a Z. Whenever I need a dash or a hyphen, I always use my Z because I rarely have a use for Zs. And so there we go. There's my title. And now see how I can position this. And oops, I actually should have cut off another edge there. I can position this pretty easily the way I want and not have to worry about the white extending uh, on the edges of this. So if you didn't want this, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in a little while why you might not want to do this. If you didn't want to do this, then what I would do is position the red paper on top of the white paper and then put the photo in place where you want it to be. I did it the backwards, so that's why I trimmed down the white. There's no right or wrong way to do these things, so whatever way works for you is fine. I really love those letter stickers. They came in the main kit and they're from Paige Evans' Sugar Plum Wishes collection. And I just adore that font and that size. It's just great for a little title like this that needs to fit in a fairly small space. What I'm talking with my tiaras about here is just how it's not how I want it to look like an explosion. So I thought what I would do is add some MTK confetti. These come exclusive in our kits, usually in the main kit. This month it was in the main kit. And they're beautiful custom confetti mixes. They're like sequins, but they don't have holes in them. And they're perfectly matched to go with the kits. So I thought I would do that. I just wanted to try it out and see how it looked, but I didn't want to commit to it quite yet. So I took them off and I will do that at the end if I still want to do it that way. I'm going to do some tearing here on the two corners. And this is again, inspired by that same journaling layout that I saw on Instagram that I don't know the name of the person to credit them, but it was uh, kind of like a burst through on one side. It was a really tiny little notebook, maybe like a three by four inch notebook. And it then it had these two diagonal tears on the other side. And I really, really love how this looks with alongside the other, the other page. So that's what I'm going with here. Now, depending on where you hold your, roll, your ruler, you will get the white edges 
on one side of the paper or on the other side of the paper. And I tore mine in two different ways so that I ended up with the white torn edge on the underside of the paper here. And what that meant was when I started to roll it up, you were seeing more white than you were seeing the pattern below. So I just tore a little bit more off so that I could get that white tearing edge on the top, which ends up being covered as I roll up the paper. And you get to see that bit of green peeking out from underneath and, uh, and it looks good with all of the other pieces that are torn because it's the same. There's this big space here of that red pattern paper. So I'm going to do some embellishing, maybe some journaling. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do there, but I'm definitely going to put something in that red space that otherwise is just, it's just a little bit too much of nothing. So we'll, we'll put something there. My vertical photo is going to go like this and it's going to be aligned in such a way that it's slightly covered by both layers on the like the top diagonal and the lower diagonal. I'm doing the exact same thing here where I just traced where I wanted my photo to go, just the little corners and oops, I put that arrow. I just didn't want to get mixed up as I do my stenciling of which side is up. So I so I marked the corners, then I drew a rectangle smaller than the corners and then I erased the corners so that you won't see any pencil showing once I place the photo back where it belongs. And I'm also going to roughly mark where the diagonal lines are so that I know. Oh, there was a little jig out of that and I just needed to move my lines to, <laughs> to note where that was. And it's important that I erase any lines that might show at this point because once I've layered some of this stenciling paste over top of my pencil lines, I won't be able to erase them anymore and you might see them because I'm using such a light coating of the gold stenciling paste that you'll, you would see the lines behind. And in fact, you will see them where the photo will go to cover it, I mean. <laughs> I use a piece of press and seal on all of my mixed media containers just so that they don't get dried out in between uses. It's especially important if you don't use your mixed media too often. So I will sometimes go periods of months without even touching mixed media. So I always like to use that product. It just keeps my mixed media fresh and from drying out. As I stencil, I'm doing the same on this side as what I did on the other side, which is making my stenciling paste just a little bit thicker and darker close to the photo and then gradually um, fading out to nothing. So I don't wanna have any harsh lines where the stencil ends. I just wanna gradually fade it out. And I do that by using less product and also using a lighter touch. I like to use this hinge mechanism to be able to check my stenciling as I go and still be able to flip the stencil back down without having to spend too much time realigning my pattern. And I'm just lining up the pattern so that it's matching up with the, with the designs that are already on the page. I just needed a little bit more of that paste. And because this is a larger, a larger space that I'm stenciling, I'm using a lot more of the paste and because I'm using more of it without cleaning my brush, it's really accumulating in my brush. And what I found when I was finished this page, I did not go to the kitchen and clean this brush right away while it was wet. So it did dry in my brush and that meant that I had a lot of clumped together bristles in my stencil brush and they were hard, like hard as a rock after just maybe two hours or so is what is the amount of time that went by. And if that happens to you, don't fear because I have a cleaning hack for you that if you followed me for a while and you've heard my, my scrap room tours and some of my other mixed media videos, you might already know, but you can soak your brush, your brush bristles in a little bit of Murphy's oil, which is a floor cleaner and it is completely safe to use with even your best quality brushes. Just soak it in the Murphy's oil and it'll seem like it's not going to make any difference at all, but Murphy's oil will soften that product and it will come out of your brush. 
I did this, so here I am just using water. Water isn't gonna cut it when there's this much paste in my brushes. So I can tell right now that it's not coming out all the way. I'm using lots of water and I'm trying to get as much of it out as I can, but I could tell that I didn't get it all out. I didn't wanna stop my process cause I was in the groove and I just didn't want, and I know that Murphy's Oil will take this out. So I didn't have to worry about it. I just left my brush, let it dry, and about two hours later, I think, I went and added the Murphy's oil and just let it soak for maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then I rinsed it out and it, the brush is like new, like you can't even tell I ever used it. So I have decided to add some gold splatter to the background. So I had to remove the red that I had already applied to this page because I wanted to add some splatter and I wanted it only on the white background and not on the red front page. So I am using my Tri-Art palette here. This is a, a very large palette, but I use it as a splatter tray, I guess, to protect my surface as I'm working so I can quickly move from one activity to another without a whole lot of cleanup. And I just have a piece of cardboard up there to protect my computer monitor, which is right beside me as I scrap. I am being pretty liberal with this beautiful gold mist. This is Heidi Swap Color Shine and I'm adding it on both of these backgrounds just to add a little bit of extra interest and to, you know, make it that messy mixed media look, which I love so much. I'll put my palette away, see how easy it cleans up. On my gray mat, sometimes it's hard to tell where the splatter landed, and so I like to just use that white surface. I'll place this back, and I'm just going to add some more adhesive to it make sure that it's oriented the right way and that I'm, I basically wanted the photo to overlap on that corner a little bit with the, to underlap, I guess, with the cover sheet of red paper, just so it didn't look so planned. And then that's how this is going to look. I think it's really shaping up as far as a good base, but it definitely needs something right around where my hands are right now. So we will put something there shortly. Before I figure out what's going to go there, I am going to just glue down these corners because they hadn't been glued yet. And I want to make sure that you don't see any of the white showing because that will interrupt. I, I've got this look like the whole, like the red from both pages is one continuous piece. Even though if I were to put this in an album, it would have the binder rings between it. If you were to put it in a postbound album, it might look a little bit more like a single page, but I don't use postbound albums and I'm not even using D-ring albums anymore for most of my pages. I'm putting them all in a box and you will see a video about that at some point, maybe over the holidays. So I am going to look at what embellishments come with this kit and the embellishment add-on. So we have, oh, so many goodies. I can't wait to use them. We have a doily, a gold doily, which I'm not going to use. And we had frames that I'm also not going to use on this particular page. And there was also an embroidery add-on that I'm not going to use. This is Vicki Booten, her goodie bag from her Peppermint Kisses collection. And then this is from Paige Evans' Sugar Plum Wishes. I love this little splay of floral things. And I really would love to use it to span the two pages, but I can't decide if I want to actually do that or not. It does look really great. What my thinking is that I could put some type of single embellishment here, either the splay or the poinsettia floral piece. These all came in the embellishment add-on. And then also have some journaling strips. And at first I was thinking I might type the journaling strips, but I was feeling a little lazy. So I decided to just handwrite them and I really like the look. I think they would have been really tiny if I had typed it and my handwriting is a little bit bigger. So they have a bit more presence on the page. So I like the, how they ended up handwritten and you'll see that process shortly. I'm also looking through the other die cuts that came. These came in the main kit and they're also from Sugar Plum Wishes from Paige Evans. And I'd like to put something over here where the this photo is bursting through the page. 
And although I really love that candy cane embellishment, it's just a little bit too busy. So I thought I'd go with the snowman instead. There are two snow people there and I can't decide which one I'll use. And that reindeer is just so cute. I thought I might put him over there, but it, between him and the gold background, it's a little bit too much brown and there's not a whole lot of color over there. So I don't know that I'm going to use that deer. You'll have to keep watching to find out. I thought that this cheers really worked well because this was the phase at which our, there were only drinks left on the table. So cheers works really well for the photo. And it was a celebratory birthday, birthday um, get together. I, I thought about repeating if I put cheers on one side, I thought about repeating a similar font on the other side. So I had joy over here. I really don't love that. I've just kind of sometimes I'll do things I don't love just for a while to see if it pans out. Sometimes I change my mind once I add more things, but in this case that joy is not going to make the cut. Now <laughs> here's a foam floral piece that I thought might work a little bit better. I'm not laying it down on the page because it is sticky and I won't be able to move it if I do lay it down. Uh, I, I don't like the size of it and so I'm going to go with this white floral piece instead and going back and forth between using joy and not using joy I just thought maybe if I move it over here I might like it more I do like it there it's cute it would work and then I ended up deciding to use this smaller red colored like the not red colored but wearing a red shirt snowman he's really cute it's like the, I think it's the snow kid. And then the other one is the snow adult. I'll put the snow adult over here. He introduces some color over to this side that otherwise would be pretty plain. There's a lot going on on this layout as far as mixed media and things bursting out. And so I'm not going to embellish this one too much. I'm having a look at the other stickers that come in the kit, but ultimately I decided that this is probably all the embellishing that's going to happen. Plus, don't forget, we're going to add some pieces to this right hand side, some confetti to make it look a little bit more like it burst out. Now, what I was gesturing there, you see how the diagonal of the white, if I had left the white paper behind the right side, I would be able to continue that diagonal tear, the lower diagonal tear across the right hand side page to continue that line. And then it would look more like one continual page as opposed to here, because we have that vertical line down the center that separates the two pages of that red line. It's it doesn't look like one continual page, although the two pages definitely go together. Like you know that this is a double page spread. Either one of those would look beautiful here. And I think that that would just be a different design choice that I just wanted to point out. If you were thinking about scrap lifting this, I'd love to see it the other way. I'd love to see how that came out. But I ultimately went with it this way. I didn't have much choice once I made those page, <laughs> once I cut down that, that white background paper. I'm looking at what strips I have here and I ended up going with the strips that I had cut off of the background paper because those other strips were a little, they were like a dirty white because of just the printing process for the manufacturer strip. There were just little bits of black that you could see on it. So these were just a better white. And so I'm drawing out my journaling, which says, or writing out my journaling, it says, because Scott's birthday is November 30th, it is often our first dinner out of the season. Jen and Adam jo usually join us. I would like these strips to span the two pages, which means I will be cutting them. So as I am printing out my journaling, I'm mindful of the fact that I might want to cut between some of these words. So I'm trying to make sure that I keep some space, especially over towards the left where the cut will likely have to be. And I have to admit, I didn't really plan this all that well. And I think that if I had spent a little bit of time figuring out how things were going to line up, I could have gotten an even better look. But as you'll see at the end, 
sometimes these things don't matter as much as we think they do because it ends up looking fine. And that's something that you can remind yourself as you're scrapbooking, right? To, to just remind yourself that sometimes we spend a whole lot of time on something that doesn't make a whole big difference in our pages. And if you love spending the time on it, then it's time well spent. But if you'd rather not, it's okay to skip some of these things. Your layouts don't have to be perfect, right? It's more about enjoying the process. This is our hobby. And, you know, we don't always get a whole lot of time to scrap. So you want to make sure that you're spending your time doing things that bring you joy. And if figuring out how this would line up so that you could cut it perfectly brings you joy and you just love the satisfaction of having it all work out at the end, I'm like that sometimes for some things. So I totally get that. And that's what you should do. But for me, I just didn't want to mess with it. So I thought I'm just going to stick these in the best that I can. I'll cut it apart and we'll just see how it looks. And it ended up looking fine. I didn't think that my glue was going to hold enough for me to be able to separate this paper, like to flip this paper around only being held by those three little strips. So I just cut it from the front, which I don't normally do, but I was able to, to get it uh, looking okay. I'm using a 0.005 pen to outline this. It's a very, very thin pen, but I do really like the added impact that that gives. Just outlining that and just make sure that you don't outline the edge that is supposed to be a continuation from the other side, right? Now I would like to use some stickles on this. And if you have stickles in your collection, then you know how awesome stickles are. What I love about stickles is that they dry. I'll just talk about it while I mess with this, trying to unclog the bottle. What I don't love about it is how they get clogged. But what I love about stickles is how they dry to just the glitter. So they dry in a line of just glitter. There's no gooey substance, like you can't see the clear glue, like the, the clear glue glue of the stickles, the liquidy part, evaporates as it dries. And all that you're left with is nice, crisp glitter, a nice line of glitter. And I haven't been able to find another product that does that. If you know of one, please leave me a comment because I love knowing what my options are for buying things. Now, as you see me mess with this, I'm using a pin. I'm trying to clear the nozzle. You can open the nozzle. It's just, you gotta, you gotta get your fingernails in there and really dig it out. If I had pliers, I don't have pliers. All I have is cutters. Didn't want to cut it. So I, I didn't use those. But as I mess with this, I will tell you what uh, my problem is with stickles. So I used to store all of my stickles upside down so that the product is in the nozzle and they never dried out and I never had this problem when I used to store them like that. And I think that that, that storage solution worked so well that I somehow convinced myself that stickles clogging isn't an issue because mine never clogged. Well, they never clogged because I was storing them the proper way. So when I moved them, I decided to display them on my shelf because they're just so beautiful. And I displayed them right side up because I don't have uh, one of those little storage things that holds them upside down. I just had them all in a box upside down before. So when I decided to store them differently, I just put them right side up. And now, as you can see, I have regrets about that. I really wanted to use these lime stickles and I just cannot get the nozzle unclogged. It seems like it's unclogged and then I go to use them and it clogs up again. So I think that it's just, there must be something else happening with these stickles. Anyhow, I'm going to end up changing because as you can see, I can get a couple out of it and then it clogs up again, a couple of dots. And I want to do not only the dots in the center, but I also want to do an outline around the outside edges of the inner floral part there, the petals. So I was able to get all of those dots done with the lime stickles, but for the outlining, I had to switch to the stickles that are called turquoise, I think. It's a similar enough shade that, oh, it's actually, they're called seafoam. 
it's a similar enough shade that you can, it's fine. You, you can't really tell that I changed colors there. So I love an outlined image with stickles. It's one of my favorite things to do with stickles and holiday layouts are a great opportunity to add some glitz and sparkle to your pages. So I love how that looks. It's not dry yet, but you'll see it in the photos. By the time I take the photos at the end, it will be dry. I am adding the vellum pieces with just two staples from my tiny attacher. That way I don't have to think about what kind of adhesive I'm using. I know there's vellum adhesive that I believe Tombow makes and I just don't have any in my stash so I think I'll have to pick some up. I am using foam dots to adhere this little snow person to the corner here. And I, I really like how that looks. If you wanted to add a little bit more detail to him, he would look really cute with his sweater outlined in red or pink stickles. I just, given my experience with stickles today, <laughs> I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I had had enough of the stickles ordeal. Definitely having regrets about storing my stickles up, uh, right side up. And also very close to my old video lights, which used to admit a lot of heat. And so a lot of them are separated, I noticed. And I think I'm going to have to either, I don't know if they're able to be stirred back up together or if I just have to. Oh, I don't want to think about what I might have to do. Let's not think about that. <laughs> I'll get them working again. <laughs> They're like my good friends sitting up there on the shelf, sparkling down on me when I'm feeling blue. I just look up and they're all arranged in rainbow order. And yeah, they make me happy. Even if I can't use them on a page, I like them up there. <laughs> I am going to adhere these little confetti pieces exactly where they landed. You saw me moving a few of them. What I was doing was just turning them right side up. Because if you adhere them upside down, the glue, because they're a little bit concaved, the glue won't necessarily hold them very well. So I do flip any over that land upside down. And this mix includes a combination of a beautiful red, a nice rich chartreuse green, and a very light pink and some gold stars. It's just stunning. I love this sequin mix. It's so pretty. I want to add them to every single page. I've refrained. I have used them, but not, not on every single page. Now that just adds a little bit of explosion detail. It looks like, you know, something burst through the page and left some residue. I'm not drawing here. I'm just using the tip of this pen. It has a little cover on it and I'm using it to make some differentiation. Two of my little blobs were bleeding together. So I just made them look like separate dots again. And although adding, oops, there was a little bit of adhesive there. So I used my adhesive remover. Although this is looking a little bit explosion-y, it's not looking quite messy enough. It feels like uh, maybe too contrived or just not messy and random enough. So I'm going to add something else. Can you guess what it might be? Yes, it's splatter and it's going to be black splatter in this case. It will bring some more black into the page. There's black on the mat and black on the other side with the cheers and the star. And so I think that this is going to work really well. I do not want my black splatter to land inside of the, of the cutout here. Oh, I placed the plastic wrapper right on my stickles that was drying. I knew I was going to do that. I actually said so to the patrons who were watching. I said having wet stickles is not a good idea, but I did it anyways. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to mix up this. This is Heidi Swap Color Shine in black, and it is stubborn. I don't know why it's not sticking to the nozzle. <laughs> it's just not dripping the way that it usually does. I have to really beat it off. I have to be very aggressive with this sprinkle in order to get it on. So I ended up just deciding to, to dot it on because it just wasn't, I don't know, it was stubborn. It had a mind of its own. It wanted to stay in the jar and not go on my page. I just use a baby wipe to clean up when I'm done. There's some splatter there from before that dried and that's fine. 
So that's looking a little bit more messy and I like the introduction of black over there. It really does make that look a little bit more like debris as opposed to sparkly pretty decorations. I'm just double checking with my sketch to see if it's looking the way that I had intended or if I had forgotten anything. There's a place to make some notes as well uh, on the on that tool so I didn't make any notes so there was nothing to remind myself of but I checked it anyways. I'm going in with a white Jelly Roll 10 pen and I am just adding little dots and also little stars just little hand-drawn stars every here and there. First I did the dots and then I decided that wasn't quite enough. Tiny tiny little details as you can see it doesn't add a ton of impact but when you're looking at it it just looks like one more random element that's sprinkled around the page to make it look a little bit more like it burst out. So before I share the photos, just a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. These folks help make this channel happen, so big thanks to all of them. Patrons get early ad-free access to all of my process videos and real-time unedited versions of my videos, as well as monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos of my room and my process. Here are some of the close-up photos of this layout. You can really see that even when you use that texture paste as a paint, it still has quite a bit of texture on it. Mind you, it's, it's very subtle, but I just love the look. And look at how beautiful that gold touch uh, looks on this page. And there is that poinsettia with the stickles outlining around it. Didn't turn out too badly, even though I did put my finger in it at one point. <laughs> So here are all of the places where you can find me on social media. The website for the Kit Club is there as well. And make sure that you join our Facebook group, which is Mercy Tierra Kit Club. Uh, Mercy Tierra Kit Club is what it's called on Facebook. And the link is in the information section below as well. Thanks so much for watching and have yourself a really great scrappy week.